full time here at Twickenham and South Africa have won 41 points to 13. Fairly comfortable scoreline in the end, but this game was far from it for long, long periods. Before the game, the walk into Twickenham, the South African fans absolutely dominant. Both the first and the second tier here completely full. And if you're watching on TV, you might think the top tier was full as well. Paper airplanes going everywhere. Um, but they just did the East Stand, so it looks good on TV. But still, a lot of people here, and the vast majority South African supporters. Shout out for Vincent Cott running out for his 50th cap uh, to start. And also, Evan Etzebad, an incredible stat 119 caps, more than the entire Wells pack put together. He had a cracking game as well. Um, okay, let's get into it. It was a slowish start. Evan Roos, it was a bit of shadow boxing at the start, but. A comedy moment as Evan Roos lost his boots and it got thrown around the picture a little while before South Africa eventually got given a penalty. Hopefully you can still hear me as the presentations are just about to kick off now. Debutant fly half, Hendrickson for South Africa missed a very kickable penalty. Uh, some early nerves there for the young man, but quelled very soon afterwards with Jesse Creel exposing a lack of pace from Dory Lake and Costello on the wing. Uh, for 7-0, the conversion hit by Hendricks uh, settling his early nerves. In the pre-game, I thought maybe Mason Grady against Esther Hazen would be a big contest. It didn't really turn out that way. Grady carried hard, but Esther Hazen knocked him back time after time. Uh, Wales knocked over a penalty with Costello to get themselves back in the game, and then the scrum battle started with Ops and Che. Dominant throughout, really, but didn't get the benefit of a lot of decisions. Uh, you need to be going forward on both sides of the scrum and it was very loose and dominant from the South Africans. Uh, next, Evan Roos, who was a machine all day. He carries the ball so hard. He carried through the middle. Somehow Rio Dyer got a yellow card off the back of it. I couldn't quite work out why in the stadium, but penalty after penalty, a line out drive and Aaron Wainwright gets another yellow card. Very soon afterwards, he came in at the side, collapsed them all for a penalty try in 14-3. At this stage, it was looking really ominous for Wales. South Africa were dominant in almost every phase. They were managed to get into the outside channels really easily. Wales were struggling to pick their men and not enough line speed probably in, in, uh, in combination. And South Africa were getting around the outside at ease. Uh, South Africa though knocked on after the, the next kickoff, which worked, gave Wales some possession and territory and they got a kickable penalty, which they missed, but having a minute off the clock when you're down to 13 players was gold dust anyway. Dyer came back on shortly afterwards and Rain Wainwright was back on and Wales really weathered that period well. Liam Williams almost scored during it as well. He um, intercepted a pass from Hendricks. Uh, again, a bit of a no-look pass from him, the young man on debut. And Wales just weren't really aware of their support. Williams could have offloaded back inside more quickly, but it allowed Edville van der Merwe on debut to <coughs> excuse me, make two tackles in quick succession and thwart what looked like a probable try. Very shortly afterwards, van der Merwe skinned Rio Dyer from the next play and went flying up the right wing. Wales found some overlaps, but they were too flat. That was another thing that happened a lot. Wales created some chances, but the detail was missing. And there was a lot of aerial battles as well. There was plenty of kicking in this game. South Africa winning most of them with, uh, with young fullback Afeli Fassi, really dominant in the air. Uh, apart from when he comes up against Liam Williams, who was doing a lot of good stuff as well. Fassi had a high boot and he caught into Plumtree. That looked like it could be a problem. Uh, these have definitely um, been red cards before, it was put on yellow and on review, but it was stayed at a yellow after that. Eben Exabet was causing havoc in the lineouts, and he got up and slapped a ball back off the Welsh throw, but Dowie Lake got through, recovered it, and charged through Faf de Klerk to score. Uh, Costello knocking a big conversion over from the sideline, and suddenly it's 14 10. With Wales being down to 13 players for some period of time, it just seemed like this was a very strange situation that it was, the game was that close because South Africa did really seem dominant. Shortly after that, again, Hendricks, uh, who he did some really good things, but he did have these moments of nerves. So he kicked the ball out on the full, which again gave Wales some territory and possession. A trick line out, 
Root deliberately knocked on, which gave a penalty in 14-13. In with the point now, and this game is suddenly very, very tight. The crowd, which had been boisterous up to that point, quietened down a little bit, and it was game on for sure. Wales used a lot of kicking in their strategy, particularly Crossfield bombs. They identified Hendricks are on the wing. Williams was up and won it in the air, and apart from an offload out the back, which when it drops, they potentially could have scored from that, and it would have been looked very different at half time. Uh, Kieran Azarati, who'd had a torrid half up against Oxen Jay, bless him, uh, went off and it looked like he was injured just before our half time for Harry O'Connor to come on. He got popped out of the very first scrum, given a penalty to South Africa, and that was basically half time. Wales are scrapping super hard, really physical in contact and battling at every time. Listen some detail. There we go, South Africa just lifting the trophy now. The Qatar Airways Cup. Fireworks and glitter going everywhere. Plenty of stewardesses and stewards. <laughs> the cameraman just got covered in glitter what kind of shot he's got there. Just let this music die down a little bit, it's going crazy. Oh, there we go, okay. Start the second half and you'd hope for Wales anyway, they would think, right, we're in this, we're absolutely in this. Let's get out there, not give anything away, try and take the game to South Africa. But South Africa scored almost immediately through Mbimbi down the left edge. Again, bad defensive read from Wales. They needed to either be more aggressive or read the game a little bit better. They were neither. And South Africa got round the outside. Again, it seemed quite easily. Great conversion from the touchline, 21-13. However, potentially at the last pass, did look a bit forward. I'd love to see it again on the TV, uh, but in the stadium, it definitely looked forward. Shortly after that, South Africa brought on uh, Franz Malherb and Bongi Umbanambi just to make sure that the scrum, you know, got even stronger. They won a penalty directly after that from the scrum, obviously. 24-13 uh, at that point. And uh, Sia Khaleesi was here in the crowd, well, rather down on the bench, I should say. And um, whenever he came up on the TV screen, the crowd went absolutely crazy. At the same time as that penalty was being kicked, weirdly. So there was like Khaleesi, crowd pit cheer. Please respect the kicker, stop. Um, it was a lovely moment after that when Cam Winnick took a high ball but landed right in front of Ebenezer Beth and got whacked really hard. Um, he bounced up like he does, he's a pinball, fair play. There's a few high shots in this game as well. Ben Carter hit him, Malherb, but was just given as a penalty. Evan Roos got held up over the goal line, but a brilliant goal line stand by Wales. They were amazing at that again all day. Wales were being smart in the scrums, they were winning penalties even though they were really struggling. Again, the tight end needs to advance at the same time. And this game just kind of then got away from Wales. Lots of errors from both sides. Lots of TMO as well, which really slowed the game down a little bit. But as the sun came out, um, South Africa kicked a massive penalty through Feinberg and Zulu. I think that's how you say it. 50 metres and clear through the post for 27-13. A line-out try and drive for Numbanambi shortly afterwards, 34-13. Fatty Imperius in the air throughout and won a high ball which led to debutant, a try on debut for Van der Merwe who sidestepped Harry O'Connor, that's not a fair contest, and joyfully dived under the sticks for 41-13. And what was probably a fair result in the end, I think. Van der Merwe won man of the match as well and looked delighted for it after the game. All right, there we go. That's my roundup here at Twickenham. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. And you can subscribe there, you can watch that one next, and do not forget to get out and play.